So obviously a big week for our football team, yeah, an exciting week, divisional opponent on the road. Um, you know, this one, obviously, we've got to go get. Uh, another reason why it's exciting for me is my uh, youngest son, who attends the U.S. Naval Academy, is a junior. He's bringing over 13 of his buddies, and guess who's buying the tickets? <laughs> my wife and I. He wanted to get 20, and my wife said 10. So I compromised closer to my wife's number than my son's number, to, so I don't get in trouble at home. So we're buying 14 tickets for those guys, and so going to be some rowdy midshipmen up cheering for the uh, Cleveland Browns during the game, probably up in the nosebleed seats uh, on Sunday afternoon. When you uh, go up against a special teams coordinator like Jerry Rossberg, who's been in there forever, do you guys have like a rivalry or anything like that? Or how, how would you describe it? No, because I didn't face Coach Rossberg very often. Um, when I did, he usually got after us pretty good. You know, uh, uh, Coach Rossberg has retired, and his oh. assistant took over. And Coach Horton, he's doing a phenomenal job. He's picking up right where Jerry left off. and. You know, with uh, Coach Harbaugh being in charge, being an ex-special teams coordinator, he was one of the best, if not the best, in, in the NFL when he was coaching special teams. So there, there's a big, going to be a big emphasis for Baltimore uh, with their special teams, as it always is. It's going to pose a great challenge for us, and, and I look forward to that. I really I kind of like that. You know, we, we went up against a good special teams unit Sunday night against the Rams, and I thought we did pretty well. Um, hopefully we'll do the same or better on Sunday afternoon, but we have our work cut out for us. They have a great kicker, a great punter. Veteran snapper who's one of the best in the business. They got, uh, you know, they got the uh, Cyrus Jones. He's returning the punt, kind of a late bloomer, but you know, I kind of liked him coming out of Alabama a few years ago. But he's he's really starting to come into his own last year and this year. And they have the rookie uh, kickoff returner who's you know built like a rock, and he's going to run people over unless we wrap him up. I talked to our team about gang tackling him and getting to the ball, and so it's going to be a uh, very challenging afternoon for us, no matter who the special teams coordinator is, because they got good players. Injury report. I know you don't want to discuss injuries, but is that something to worry about? Even though he was a full participant, long snappers aren't always easy to find. Yeah, on the I, no, I think Charlie's doing fine. I mean, he he practiced yesterday with no no issues at all. The drop kick that the Ravens tried at the end of that Chiefs game. <laughs> Had you seen that before? Never or? seen. I okay. just showed it today in the meeting. I've never seen it before. I don't know what the rule is. They got to come up with something because that was offsides or illegal formation or illegal mo something. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. It, it, it had to be some sort of penalty. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure the league hadn't seen it before either. I guess it's them trying to be creative, whatever. I mean, you can fair catch that ball because the ball never hit the ground after it, you know, the drop kick. Uh, as soon as his foot hits it, if it goes straight up in the air, you can fair catch it, which Kansas City wisely did. Um, so I, I don't know. We're ready for anything because he he's got a really good surprise. On, I mean, uh, onside kick, surprise onside. We'll be ready for all that stuff. See more creative stuff like that because of the new rules. They sort of not negated, but they made onside kicks harder. I mean, do you almost have to think outside the box like that? Yeah, you know, I guess that's thinking outside the box. I, I don't understand it. Um, it obviously didn't work, but you know, it could work, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we do some creative things with our kickoff coverage unit in, ter in terms of the, the kicker, you know, putting the ball in the corner and let our guys cover and, and twist and move and make our guys hard to block. And um, our guys have embraced that so far this year. We've done a pretty good job on kickoff coverage. And, you know, every, like I said, every, every weekend poses a challenge, a threat based on who their returner is and what schemes they use and how they block. And this is a very well coached team. So my creative thinking out of the box is how we can cover better and cover what they do well and stop what they do well. With that, Jamie, you know, he's been punting really well, but he had that one that kind of went out of bounds. Mm -hmm. like, did you see anything on that one that, you know, you guys can correct, or is it just that happens? No, I mean, it, it does happen, unfortunately, with especially young punters or even older punters. Um, you know, he had the one that, that the one you're talking about is the 21 yarder. I think he rushed it. You know, he didn't feel any pressure. We blocked it up perfect, but he felt like he had to get it out of there quick, and maybe I overcoached him on that, which I probably did. Um, but, it, you know, he dropped it inside and punched at it rather than kicking it. And, you know, he made a mistake and he learned from it. Uh, he punted the ball well yesterday on a windy day in practice. And I, I think the one thing about Jamie, the great thing about him is that he's got a short memory. He came back that one we punted from the two with 4.56, I believe, to go in the game. We're down by seven. That game could have been over right there. If we, if we kick a line drive punt with that returner and they return it to the 30 and they kick a field goal, they're up 10, the game's over. He launched the 51-yarder. It was a 5-2-8 hang time. It was a phenomenal kick. Tavier went down, and, and we tackled him for a 51-yard net, and then our defense got a uh, turnover. They, Justin Burris had an interception right after that. So um, that, to me, showed that he's got some mental toughness. That was very encouraging for us to see that. 
time of year makes him such a good special teams player? He loves it. I mean, it's so important to him. And we got a locker room full of those guys. And, um, you know, he's fast and he's tough and he's smart and he studies. And, and he, he was very well prepared for that game like he'll have to be again this weekend because I've we put him in spots that are going to be, it's going to be more difficult for him than for other guys because we're going to put him blocking their best gunner or uh, going against their best uh, kickoff cover guy when he's on kickoff return and, you know, in every phase. And we even got him on the field goal block team because he does such a good job in that phase as well. So, you know, Tavier, like a lot of our guys have bought into what we're uh, coaching and uh, their attitude's been good. We've got some leaders starting to emerge in that locker room on special teams and usually those are the younger guys anyway. Uh, but I like the direction that we're going, and we just got to start having success um, and helping our football team in, in all facets, not just uh, covering a punt here and covering a kickoff there. We got to get our return game going consistently, and we got to you know, help our offense and field position as well. Hey Mike, uh, how many, uh, I know you're trying to impact every game, not just play well, but have a major impact on a Correct. game. Over the course of your career, what's a good year? How many games do you impact on a good year? Um, you know, if we play sound and solid and we play almost even and, you know, and, and win the field position battle, obviously those are the games I think you're talking about that are, you know, just you're, you should do that. And that's what we expect. You're talking about games that we go out and win. Yeah, I mean, you're hoping three. You can a big punt return that sets up a field goal at the end of the game, a big kickoff return uh, in the second quarter that puts you up by 10, whatever. Um, we like to make, we talk about making impact plays across the board. And the one thing that people, uh, fail to realize you guys understand it because you guys cover it so much but a lot of people fail to realize is that you can make a uh, an impactful play on kickoff coverage and you tackle them at the 17 yard line with two minutes to go in the game and then they got to go 83 instead of 75 that could be an extra 10 15 20 seconds whatever the case may be or you kick off from the 50 and you pin them deep on a high short kick you tackle them at the eight or you force a turnover or you force a penalty all those little things that we talk about and emphasize all the time uh, try to make an impact play every single time you go out there because you really don't know when that play is going to occur throughout the course of a game. You don't know if it's going to be the first quarter, the fourth quarter, overtime, whatever, uh, you know, when that opportunity is going to arise. So that's what we try to prepare for every time we go out there. There's so, few, so many touchbacks. Um, is, it, is kick return difficult just because it happens so infrequently? Well, it, it depends on the, the time of year. You know, right now we're going to get more touchbacks as it gets colder and windier in the stadiums that we play in. You know, we're, we hope to get some more opportunities. So we're going to prepare every week like we're going to have opportunities. We're not going to have 15, 18 returns. We're going to have two or three returns that we do really well in practice that we prepare for, knowing that we won't get as many opportunities. As the year goes on, we hope to get a few more. Um, Baltimore's kickoff team is outstanding. They're, they've been challenging people like we have. And uh, they've been covering kicks really, really well. So we we intend on being prepared. We're going to be prepared for them to to challenge us, and we got to go out there with that mentality. Um, a good kicker like uh, Tucker, he's going to kick touchbacks when he wants to. Um, but if they want to challenge us, we got to be ready. We just got to make smart decisions back there with the football as well, and not bring one out from seven, eight deep like they did when we had Cordero Patterson. We were doing that all the time. <laughs> he was pretty good at it. The uh, pantheon of great kickers is where's Justin Tucker rank in your career? Pantheon now. I was an economics major. I mean, maybe I should know what that word means, but um, I would imagine it means in the in the history, the grand history of the National Football League. I think Justin Tucker's the best kicker in the game right now, and he has been for years. Um, he makes it pretty much everything, and he crosses the 35, 40 yard line. Their, their offense crosses the 35, 40 yard line. It's almost automatic. So we got to put some pressure on him off the edge, pressure on him inside. We got to do some creative stuff with field goal block to try to put some doubt in his head, but he's a confident young man. He's always been a good kicker. Um, I don't know, short from trying to hopefully stubs his toe in pregame. It's hard to it's hard to stop a guy like that. I'll look up Pantheon though when I go back up to my office. We, we've heard uh, Phil Dawson talk about how difficult it is to kick in First Energy Stadium, and, and we saw Greg Zerline miss one wide right on Sunday night, but what kind of stadium is Baltimore to kick in, in first person? And, and I don't, again, I don't have a ton of experience at Baltimore. Um, it's been several years since I coached there. But I would imagine it's like any outdoor stadium, you're going to have days that are beautiful, like I think it's going to be on Sunday, and you're going to have days that are uh, cold and windy. Um, about, I think, maybe six, seven years ago, we played there, and it was snowing like mad. It was that weekend where, I mean, the whole field was covered in snow. And so you just know, obviously, it's not going to snow Sunday, but you just don't know what you're going to get. So we go out there. I don't worry about it during the week. I think the guys, they don't talk about it, but they'll check the weather on the side. Um, but when we show up on game day, that you know Sunday morning, late morning, and prior to pregame, uh, we'll kind of figure out our game plan from there.